Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks. And today's project is this beautiful shoe. Well, it was a beautiful shoe. So this is a, um, basically I'm entering a contest in the Netherlands, okay? And you get to restore one shoe. The other one, I'm gonna keep it worn out the other one's got holes. I'll, I'll show you guys a little later. Basically, I'm going to restore this to the best that I can to see if I can win a competition. So, first, we start with a last. Now, I adjusted some things on this last to make it work. And I, I fit it in there, and it worked pretty good, actually. It was almost like exactly the same shape as the shoe. Got very lucky. And um, so, you know, once uh, once I wet the uppers, put this in there, give it some shape, we can start disassembling and redoing, you know, basically, this is a Norwegian welt. Okay, all this has got to be replaced. All these hand stitching has got to be replaced. I mean, completely, the whole bottom is going to be replaced. The only thing I'm going to salvage is the uppers. Even the footbed, I'm going to have to put a new piece in there because it's all so distorted. So it's going to be a good challenging project for me. I don't think uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever brought. Well, maybe I have. I don't know. But it's going to be difficult. So all right, let's get started. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! What did I get myself into? <laughs> Oops! There goes the shoe. Now disassembling it is the easy part. It's remaking it is going to be a tough part. I mean this sucker has been repaired a couple of times and not a very good repair unfortunately. This Norwegian welt is a new one on me, so I haven't really done one. Done one. I haven't done any yet. Can't even speak. Talk about transformation. Man. I see it in my head already. I mean, it looks good in my head, but I don't know if I can... Because these uppers are just... They're cracked. They're wasted. Crying out loud. Look at this thing. My God, man. Oh. But you know what? There's a will, there's a way. Especially if I want to win. So I've got till, it's the beginning of November now. I've got till end of next month, December, to ship these in. And the contest is, well, you have to have, there's a deadline before the year's over to send your items in, right? But the award ceremony is not till, is not till April. So I'll be, I'm gonna make plans to go anyway. I'm gonna travel a little bit, see some friends in the business. Might go to England first for a couple of days and then from there, maybe Belgium, Netherlands. I wanna to go to Spain. Let's see where else, Italy, maybe Italy. Look to see some shoe factories or something. Something related with business. All right, this is becoming difficult with the with the last in it. I think I'm gonna have to remove it and take it apart. It'll be easier that way. All right, let's continue. Man, a very poor job. The, this repair. Well, I counted three repairs on this shoe. Instead of stitching it, they they nailed it on there. You see these nails? And I see that hole there. 
they fill that in there. I guess the customer wore right through the sole. I don't know how in the world you wear it through that, that thick sole. And, um, and they patched it in there with some sort of a cushioning or something. Man, oh man. So it's getting there. I mean, I think the challenge is going to be trying to bring these uppers to what they used to be. You know? And see this pattern right here? Looks like it's some sort of a... A design that was underneath the leather to kind of bump it up to raise it so I'm gonna see if I can duplicate that all right let's continue okay so Norwegian welt is basically you've got the uppers it's not a Goodyear welt okay it's not it's not really a Blake stitch but it is but it isn't it's kind of complicated to explain but you've got the uppers uppers come over like this it gets stitched and then you put a midsole which is this now this gets Blake stitched and then the sole comes in and it gets rapid Blake stitched so it's almost like a good year welted when you're looking at it from the top like this but that piece it's not a good year welt it's just a piece of like a midsole type attached to the shoe you see there's the shank okay so the trick is going to be replacing that footbed and then duplicating those norwegian stitches because everything is stitched by hand it's kind of cool it's a very structural structurally sound shoe very cool very cool design. So I'm going to try to duplicate that. <laughs> oh Lord, what did I get myself into? It's easier said than done. <laughs> All right, let's continue. I crack myself up sometimes. Now we're removing, basically, this is called a hold fast. That's the footbed, basically, and it's stitched together. Wow, this is a cool shoe. It's awesome. Now, in order for me to sand the uppers to fill those in and re-dye it, I'm going to have to remove this bump right there, okay? I can't do what I want to do with that bump there. So, after I, after I refinish the uppers, maybe I can put that back. I mean, I don't have to. You don't have to make it look like original. You can do whatever you want in this contest. Some contests, you have to basically make it look like the original shoe, like... Our association has a contest and um, you have to make it you have to make the shoe look like exactly came out like the factory as much as possible anyway so one can't be repaired so the judges can look at the unrepaired and see what it used to look like so they have something to compare it to Jesus Christ, wait a minute, what a oh my god oh my god wow 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 the more I take it apart, the more nervous I get. And I don't get nervous really when it comes to projects. This one, oh my goodness. Oof. It's almost like making a new shoe. Damn, there it goes. Wow. Man, look at that. Well, I guess we don't need the last anymore. Wow, wow, wow. Yep, I was right. There was something in there. Just a little bump, like a little piece to, to give it, yeah, to give it some, there she is. I knew it. 
Maybe I can reuse that. Wow, look at this thing. Man, this is made very well. Yeah, it's an expensive shoe. That's why. I forgot the name of it. I'll, I'll find the name. I have. I, I did a little bit of, you know, looking into it, and I found out exactly what it's supposed to look like when it gets done. Good luck. Wow. Unbelievable. All right. There's the shoe. <laughs> Let's go. What the heck is that? Get the heck out of the way, boy. Look out of the way. All right, let's continue. Now I had to make a little bit more modification on this last. See that right there? So I've got the footbed, the hold fast, I guess that's what they call it, I think. Pretty much almost same shape as the, as the last, okay? Now that's important because if I wanna cut a new piece, I've got to make it exactly same shape so it fits inside the shoe. Now, I've been working on the uppers. You see that? That's a before. That's an after. Now I'm kind of, uh, I'm going to wait till tomorrow after this dries, okay? I'm debating whether I should just cut a new uppers or, or is that going to be considered as as repair i mean that's almost like a new shoe i don't know if i want to do that i want to keep the kind of integrity of what the shoe looked like you know so i gotta i gotta think about this overnight i'm gonna sleep on it and come back when i start working on it again That'll give me a better idea of what I'm going to do. I mean, yeah, of course, brand new one's going to look brand new. But am I capable of making a, a brand new shoe? I don't know. I've never done it before. Well, I have, but not like this style. This is the lining inside. It's pretty much beaten to hell. This is the heel counter. This is what gives the stiffener on the back of the heel. Also, that's the toe counter there the toe puff it gives that stiffener it gives that toe shape so as you can see it's it's about it's about had it all right well we're gonna have to continue next time and i'm gonna have to make some decisions on which way i want to go all right let's continue All right, so at this stage, as you can see, we have worked the uppers to death. I dyed them red. I'm going to do like a reddish, you know, maybe burnish the toes black a little bit. Sanded, dyed, sanded, dyed, sanded, dyed. I don't know. I did it maybe about four times. Now, it looks much, much better. I know it looks like crap, but it looks much, much better than what it did. Okay. Structurally, it's not too bad, but you can't sand the leather too much or else or else you're going to ruin it. Okay. Now, I had to adjust the last few times. As you can see, right around the toe, I added a little piece there to extend that, to give it that shape. Added a piece in the back, added a piece on the bottom to give it the right size. That's It's approximately, approximately same shape as the shoe approximately it's not exact now this is the hold fast piece this is the new piece that literally goes on the bottom that's the footbed basically that's where you step you know put your foot on this goes like this now there's two stitches on the sides right the first stitch we're going to stitch to that just like that Okay, and then the second stitch, when the midsole comes in, we'll stitch on the midsole. Now we're jumping ahead a little bit. Now we're going to put another coat of dye on here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. We're going to buff it and check for cracks a little bit more. If we have to, we're going to 
basically I have to re-dye it again to give it like a base coat. I'm using Phoebe's Red like that. Now, I didn't have to replace the hold fast. I should wear some gloves, right? It's okay. But the old one was so rotted out that I don't think I'm going to be able to re-stitch it again. It's just going to fall apart. It's just dry rotted like crazy. You see how in this area right here absorbing more? Because there's no finish there. So we sanded that. But if you keep on putting a couple of coats on there and then buffing it, it'll it'll get better. Now remember, this is not going to be worn, okay? So there are some steps that I am kind of not paying too much attention to it. Because the contest is basically a visual contest and not really, you're going to wear it, okay? But you have to kind of do it somewhat properly or else it's not going to look good. It's not going to look right, I should say. The shape of the shoe. We're going to let this dry. We're going to work on the interior lining area. I'm going to make them a new lining. Again, I don't really have to, but I think to give it some structure to the shoe, you have to have some sort of a, a decent lining, not, not the worn out lining that we had. The original lining. I think the hardest part was working on the uppers here, trying to bring it back because it was, you guys remember, it was in bad shape. Yeah, here, here is the other shoe. And look at this thing, man. Looks like a dinosaur tooth. <laughs> I can't wait to finish this. I think it's going to look really, really cool. If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. That's okay. I got enough trophies. This is just a challenge that I wanted to take on and see if I can bring it back. Why would I do this for a, for a customer, like a paid customer? I don't think I would because... You're not really going to make it look decent to a point where you can wear it again. It'll be like making a new shoe almost, you know? I'm not really a shoemaker. Well, I'm not a shoemaker, not really. But I have some, some sort of, a, you know, some techniques that I can, I can use while working on jobs like this. All right. Probably got four coats of dye on here. Probably could use a couple more. So we're going to let that sit for a day or two. I think it'll be kind of cool looking. We'll see what it looks like when it gets done. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we'll figure something out. All right, let that sit. Now, this basically, this is how good Goodyear welted construction is made like. You can do the Norwegian style stitch like this is, or you can do the Goodyear, your regular Goodyear welted shoe. This is about the best way to do it. Mass production, they'll, they'll do They'll put a webbing right there. It's called a gemming, and they'll stitch it on there. But this is this is about the best way. Now I screw this one up. See those cuts right there? Basically, as I was cutting it from the top here, I cut it too deep. So this is trash. I can't use this again. I'm gonna have to remake it, which is not a problem as long as that shape is important. You know, get that exact shape, same shape as what the shoe used to be. 
So we'll cut another one. We'll, we'll give it another try. All right, let's continue. So at this stage, this is basically the lining of the shoe. This right here. Okay. Now, this is the toe counter. This is the heel counter. So we're going to have to make new pieces there. Okay. Now, this is very, it's pretty tricky to, to do anything with one piece leather with these contours now you, this is not the this is not what you're going to see it's actually it's red leather you see it's the red color that's what you're going to see when the shoe is done this is basically going to cover the uppers are going to cover that suede you're not going to see that suede the suede is just underneath the part of the leather okay now without you know wrapping this around without any pleats or without any wrinkles it's pretty tough to do but it works you just have to kind of work at it and and pull it and make sure that there's no creases involved anywhere else now we're going to remove this because we've got to attach the uppers to the lining then we still have to make that bottom piece here which remember this one i screwed it up i got to make a new one so this is the old one and the new one's going to be similar to that now, the uppers, as you can see, they're, they're coming along pretty good. I mean, is it new? No, of course not. You still got some issues with the uppers are cracking. You see that? But it's okay. It's not, it's not meant to be a 100% brand new shoe. You're, you're trying to restore it as best as you can. Now, the edges here, the sides, the stitches, this is called a Norwegian stitch, okay? There's several ways of doing that. The, the old one, if I can show you this real quick. This first stitch, the top stitch, you see it's just a single stitch. You can do it that way. The red thread is the same stitch you were looking at on the old one. These two white threads intertwine through the red one so that's what it'll look like finished then the second layer thread you can see it there which is that one right there it's going to be white it's going to be a single thread just like this this is called a norwegian welt okay now we have to do a lot of things before we get to that level we have to re redo the the toe counter, the heel counter, to reinforce the lining underneath, put those bumps back. You guys remember at the beginning, great, see where I put it, it's here somewhere, I'll find it. It was little bumps that was on the inside here, little pieces of rubber it looked like, to kind of give it that design, that shape. I don't know if you can see it in this old one, you see that line? We're going to replicate that like it was. Oh, that's what the old one looked like, by the way. <laughs> you guys see that? Oh my God, what a big difference. This is going to be so cool once it gets done. It's going to be unbelievable. I'm so excited. All right. So anyway, let's, um, what I'd like to do now, I'm going to burnish the toe a little bit black. I need to do that now because once the white thread goes on, you can't really put black on there. It's just not gonna it's just not gonna work maybe I should wear some gloves I always I always forget to do that because I always remember it at the end this is a Phoebe's dye by the way Phoebe's leather dye and you don't need too much just a little bit you're just kind of putting black accents at the toe All right, we need to remove this thread. This is this was just the sample that I was doing. Just see how well it'll work. This thread is a little too thin. I'm going to use a little bit thicker thread, so it'll it'll stand out a little bit more. I think it's gonna look real nice. Let me cut this off instead of sitting there ten hours trying to undo that. It's just a sample thread. That's all. It's not a big deal. 
so we don't need to save it. Cool. All right. Now, I like that burnished toe effect. It's, it's kind of cool looking, you know. Let's move that out of the way. Just a matter of dabbing a little bit of black. It's coming that blend, try to blend that in a little bit. I can use this metal here last. So it's December 1st, and I've got to get this in the mail. I'd say maybe in about a week. The time is kind of, you know. Getting to a point where I got to do something about it because it's got to get there. They got to go through the judging and the shows in April of next year. But I got to get it in there. The deadline's end of the year. They got to have it. So it's got to get done. I mean, I'm my my schedule pretty backed up. It's just this week again. We were close for Thanksgiving and. I only took Thursday off. I came in the rest of the week to try to catch up on this this workload. Doing the best I can. It is what it is. As you guys can see, right? It's not bad. It's kind of working. Next, we're going to remove the we're going to remove the leather lining cover from the last because I need the last. <clears throat> and then we'll we'll restretch it back on there. So let's let's try to do this first real quick just to get an idea of where the where the lining is going to go. Something like that. Just to get a rough idea cuz we might have to cut this out. I'll cut it too short. I think it'll be alright. Cool. We'll let that dry a little bit while we remove this. It's basically just um, a matter of wetting the leather and just stretching it a little at a time to try to get rid of the creases on the uppers. Now I'm sure that Sure, I'm making mistakes along the way, but you know what? I'm doing the best I can for what I know. People ask me, when are you going to make your own shoes? I'm like, eh. I don't know if I want to be able to make my own shoes, you know? I'd love to. I'll, I'll, I'll study that once. Um, this is too big. I'll study shoemaking when I retire from this business. You know, because there's no time. That's the lining. That's what you're going to see inside of the shoe. The red leather. I don't know. I like red. Red is such a passionate color, you know. I think um, it kind of, um, once you look at it, it's just, you have no choice but just to kind of 
evokes emotions, you know? All right, let's continue. So this piece of leather here, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna fold this over like that, okay? And this is gonna go right on the edge like this. It's for the top seam, top piece. I don't know what they call that. I gotta study up on this, on this uh, shoemaking lingo. Now, structurally, structurally, you're supposed to pe you're supposed to put a piece in there to give it some structural support so it doesn't stretch out of shape. Because that back piece is basically is the support for the shape of the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a piece of string in there, like a nylon thread. Yeah, it's probably not advisable, but you know what? It's all right. Don't forget, this is not for a customer, per se. This will work. This is not going to stretch out of shape. And it's going to give a little bit of like a small little bead once it folds over like a little like a like a piping almost yeah it's almost like a piping but the leather's got to be pretty thin so it doesn't look too thick Cool. I gotta be careful not to pull the string through because it will come out if I pull it from the other end. It's coming along. The shoe, I called it the impossible restoration, are we gonna call it? Yeah, because you guys saw what we started with. It was my God, man! It was not. It was a big mess. All right. I guess we would call this hammer time. It's a little different hammer time, but nevertheless, it's hammer time. That's not too bad. Okay. Now, we're going to glue this in here. Some of these areas that it's curved, we're going to have to, we're going to give it some relief cuts so it'll kind of bend a little bit. Also here, we're going to do the reverse. We're going to take a few pieces out so we can curve it this way. Okay. All right, let's continue. So it's got to be almost even with the top. Not quite, but almost even. You can see, barely see the black there. And once the lining comes underneath it, we cut the lining right on the edge. And this piece will be sandwiched between the upper and the lining. You know what, I think that um, overall, you know, I see myself in the future maybe if I sell the business and, um, and have free time in my hand to go to the repair shops, like my friends and stuff, help them out. Help them, out, help them out to catch up on their work. Like every month we'd go to somebody's place like for a week. And we'd work our ass off just to, just to catch up on the workload. Because there's a lot of guys who 
who are, have busy shops who really need the help, you know? Like me, I mean, I would... I'm still searching for good employees. Hell, any, any employees at this point. Good. Bad. Not ugly. Nobody's ugly. Everybody's beautiful. Cool. Okay. So... This back part is sticking up just a little bit too much. Let's tuck that in a little bit. Cool. Check it out. Where are you? Do you guys see this? That camera angle. All right, that's good enough. And that is done. One less thing. This so this this guy's a little too high. You see. So we just simply just peel it back, push it back down. Cool. Much better. And just tap it one more time. So it stays put. All right, cool. Let's continue. My thumb's not in there. There you go. Tongue's in there. We just stitched the lining. We've got the, this is the heel counter. Remember that stiff part, stiff leather that we made that? And then we got to still put the toe piece in there, the toe, um, the toe guard, toe counter. And then we'll start stretching the leather over on top of the last and, and start stitching. Let's continue. All right, so. We've got the lining stitched in there. The heel counter is in, the toe counter is just basically there like that, which we will glue it in place once we start stitching it. This is basically the footbed. Okay, I wet it down because I've got to I've got to punch these holes on the sides, all these markings you see. They all got to be punched. Basically, I copied the original holes okay because uh it's got to match it's got to match the, the existing shoe now this is a pain in the ass to do pain in the butt to do because basically you've got to pre-punch the holes like that and it's got to come off on the side here side of the piece not from the top so you just have to be patient and wiggle your all here through 
each one of them. We've got beeswax here just to kind of make it a little bit more lubricant to for it all to go through the leather. Now at this at this stage you can you can do this uh, you know you could do the Goodyear welt at you right. The difference is that the Norwegian welt is the uppers come and they go up like this out and then it gets stitched down. Okay the Goodyear welt tucks under and there's a piece of leather piece leather welt it stitches from the bottom. But we want to keep the same style as what we got. We're not changing it to a good year welt. Some of the quality custom shoemakers will do it this way. We'll have a footbed like that, which is much more durable, long lasting than the mass production where they put a gemming on the bottom to attach the sole to, like, um, like this basically. have one apart but the cork is covering it there's a gimming there's a piece of fabric right there that kind of goes up and then the uppers and the welt get stitched together so that's basically the mass production work but the quality you know quality shoemakers will will use this style I guess the idea that Sometimes the gemming will come loose from the footbed. It'll distort the shape of the foot. This won't. Obviously, it's one piece. It's very tough to poke through that leather. As you can see, it's getting there slowly. All right, let's continue. Wow, that was tough. That was very tough. Oh my god. Man, I broke two alls. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Who knows? Whew. Wow. That was tough. And, and this leather is not very... Um, it's not very hard leather, you know what I mean? It's, it's mediocre leather. I could imagine if it was harder leather have a hell of a time getting these through wow okay this is done oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness all right so we're gonna do this here okay and then we're gonna we're gonna start stitching huh. thought this uh, making holes was tough Stitching is going to be another journey. I've never done this before, so this is something new to me. Hmm. It's exciting though. Can't wait to see the, the outcome of it. Very, very cool. These are just temporary, temp temporary nails. This way it doesn't move while I'm stitching it. Oh my god, we are like getting there, getting there. Exciting! Yeah, keep this out for now. We gotta. First, we got to stretch the lining and then kind of temporarily put it in place. You know? Maybe we'll go ahead and put a little glue there and just kind of glue that in place first. All right, let's continue. It's coming along. There's a lot going on here, man. Whew. So you got two piece, two strings here, these two right here, the black and the white. The black goes through, loops it out here. This goes in, and then they intertwine like that together. They pull it tight. Okay, so let's try that. 
Now you gotta remember the marks we made earlier. I don't know if you can see them or not. Let's see. Pretty whitewashed here. There you go. So all those marks are lining up with those holes. Okay. Basically, there's a hook right there at the end of the needle. Put the thread on that hook, and you pull the black thread through the hole. Once it's through the hole, there's a loop right here. Put that, put the white thread through, and now you've got the two pieces nice and tight. Okay. Then you do this, and you do this. These two threads are just kind of there for decoration. They're not really doing anything. It's the the black and the first white thread are ba basically in a you know in a lock in each other and then tightening the uppers to the footbed. Okay. This is going to take a while, so I'm not going to I'm not going to record everything. There's no way. It's just it's a lot harder than it looks. So I'll show you guys once I'm pretty close to getting done. All right, let's continue. Oh, that was, wow. Whew. It was tough. I had a little mishap right there. You see that? I'll fill that in there. Once the sole comes in, I don't think it'll be able to, it'll be visible. I mean, overall, it was a pretty cool experience. Okay. Now, it's always more difficult. Well, I shouldn't say it's more difficult. It's difficult, period, to make shoes. But when you've got old, older shoes, it was in this shape, try to bring it back, especially this design where when it's new, the leather is longer here, right? So you can, you can put the midsole and then stretch the leather on top of it and then stitch it. But when it's already been cut, it's difficult to restitch again the exact same places. Now, that's just a one row of stitch, okay? So once we, once this dries, okay, a midsole is gonna come on like this. I've gotta put another second row of stitches holding the midsole to this. And then the outer sole is going to come in. That's going to be stitched to the midsole. So you've got three sets of stitches there. But again, the leather being this old, I mean, I've conditioned the heck out of it so many times, but I mean, there's only so much stress that the old leather can take. So that's why, you know, I'm lucky I just got this going on and nothing else. But again, it's not over yet. I'll be happy once I finish the stitch the second stitch onto the midsole then I'll kind of relax a little bit I won't have to worry about if I'm gonna tear anything along the way all right so as you can see it's coming along pretty good so I'm gonna take a little break because my hands are about dead I have to hand stitch that and um, and after a while I get a little tired so all right let's continue so we've got the midsole on here, and we are punching the holes. Oops, somebody's stuck in there. This has been uh, <clears throat> very good, baby, if I can stop it. This has been a very good experience. It's not over yet. We're getting there. Mad respects to the shoemakers out there. Spoke shoemakers. I mean, man, this is like, this is ton of work. Ton and ton of work. And of course I'm not using the right tools, but you know, I'm a cobbler. This is all I got. We'll make it work. Hmm. A couple more. One, two, three, four more. 
four more and we can start stitching. Well, that's that's going to be the second second row stitch here. And then when the sole comes on, the sole will get stitched to the midsole, which is this piece here. So that's your third set of stitches there. Okay. 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 My wife was watching a video the other night. She's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, my viewers. She's like, what? She's like, people aren't listening to what you're saying. Oh, yes, they are. They're, they're listening to me. And she was shaking her head. <laughs> I hope you guys are listening to me. Oh my god, what if I'm talking to myself? No, it can't be. I'm talking to myself now, but... Right, now she's got a thought stuck in my head. Thanks, honey. Man, this is really, really tough. I am breaking a sweat. So as you can see, the uppers are kind of breaking down a little bit because I abused the hell out of it while I was working. So it's going to get another coat of dye, another coat of conditioners, another coat of sanding lightly, another coat of dye. So so we're getting there. This is a this is a process, unfortunately. This um, well, that's a red lining. Um, whenever uh, leather is this bad of a shape it's going to happen if you don't if you don't maintain it if you keep on bending it you're rubbing it and, and you know messing with it it's going to break down again but i think once it gets done i think it'll look real nice like see the back here see how nice and shiny it is now so we're getting there all right let's continue So we are stitching the midsole on. This was similar stitch like we done earlier with the black and white thread. Poke the hole through like that. Loop the black thread on the hook. Pull it like that. And then pull the white thread through the loop and pull them tight together. And you have the second row stitches. Okay. 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 Last time I sped, I sped the video up. People were like, "Hey man, we want to watch you work. We don't want to watch you speed it up." I'm sure they don't sound like that, but you know what I'm saying. Don't you dare get offended, huh? Golly, I'm just kidding. Anyway, problem is that this video is about. I don't know, 45, 50 minutes long already, and I'm not even done yet. So, it's going to take me like 10 weeks to upload the damn thing. So I can't be doing every little detail to show you guys. It's the same thing, I'm just going all the way around the shoe. So, when I, when I get it done to about this point, I'm going to start over again, okay? I mean, start the video over again. Alright, let's continue. Man, it is hot and hot here. So we're almost back to the beginning point. Man, I'm getting tired of hand stitching this damn thing. And it's just one shoe. It's not even like a pair. Mm -hmm. All 
All right. I was listening to uh, Chris Cornell music while I was stitching it. I like that dude's voice. He's a very unique voice. Too bad he's gone. Dead. Okay. This is the last stitch. So what we're gonna do, we're going to pull we're gonna pull the black one. And then the white one pops out. Grab that white one. Come on now. Grab that white one and pull it all the way through. And now what you're going to do here, you're just going to make a little knot. Regular knot. One and two. That's it. It's not going anywhere. Cut a little bit off. She's done. And this just kind of gets, you know, stitched down. Man, this is like a lot of whitewash here, huh? I gotta take it. You know what? Oh, it's hammer time. A little hammer time. So I bought a camcorder. No, this is not on the new camcorder. Not yet. Okay. Now you guys remember that little area that was broken? Right there? So I glued that in there, but once it gets cleaned up, you won't know it was broken at all. Oh my lordy, lordy, lord. We're getting there, we're getting there. Damn, this is so exciting. <laughs> Who else gets excited about a shoe? <laughs> I don't know. Oh lord. I mean, lining didn't turn out that wonderful, but you know what? Again, it's a it's a test piece. Still not done yet. I mean, you know, I, I like the fact that it's all one piece. It's kind of cool, you know? Alright, we'll see. I still got to clean the inside, condition it. When I make an insole a sock liner here, so I'm going to duplicate that same stitch on the side, just a Norwegian stitch, the first stitch. And then I'm going to write on there, recrafted in USA by Beto's Leather Works. And right here, remember there were two stitches across here. One here and one right there. So what I thought about doing maybe, instead of having just like one plain stitch there, I would get a piece of, a piece of thread like this, okay, and then get red, blue, Okay, red, white, and blue, American flag, red, white, and blue, because this is going overseas. Just kind of hand stitch it little little loops on that to make it red, white, and blue. That would be right there on top of the shoe right there. I think that oh look cool. I mean after all it is it is I mean I'm representing us, United States. You know what I mean? So even though I'm Armenian, but uh, America we're living in America. This is our home. So we have to respect it. Cool. All right. So the sole is going to come on. It's going to be machine stitched, outsole stitch. I'll show you guys that. Just kind of kind of go through that in my head. Not sure how to do the bottom yet. We still haven't uh, figured it out. I still got to, I got to figure something out. Let me turn this up a little bit. There you go. So I was thinking about maybe doing it red. I don't know yet. We'll see. I'm going to leave these edges a little bit light right here. Maybe like a light brown on the sides. So I'm debating. I'm kind of I'm kind of making it up as I go along. So either way, whatever we do, it's going to look good. All right. Let's continue. Okay, so I cut this piece of leather right here to kind of give it a hump in the middle. Like a like a fiddle back waist is what it's called. Because it looks like a looks like a fiddle back waist. 
Yeah, like fiddle back waist. Like a fiddle. You know, the waist of a fiddle is like this. You know what I mean. Now, this is a JR sole. This is, I cut that from the bend. Oh, let's see if I can turn that around and show you. A bend is like a big piece of leather right there. Okay? If I have like large feet and the regular sole doesn't fit, this is what I use basically. Now I sand that a little bit around here just to kind of thin it out here a little. Now, uh, I still don't know if I'm going to do like a blind stitch or exposed stitch, which means it's self-explanatory. Blind stitch, you can't see it. Hence, blind stitch. Get it? Okay. I'm glad you guys are following. Now, an exposed stitch is exposed. A hence exposed stitch. What does it look like? That's exposed stitch. Do you see the see the stitches? You're seeing the stitches. Blind stitch. This is a blind stitch here. Oh, this is a good year welted shoe. That's a blind stitch. You see, you can't see the stitch because basically what it is is that the side splits open, lift a piece of leather, stitch it, and then close it back down. That's a lot harder to do, especially like a JR sole because the JR is so dense, it's not easy to cut that, slice that open. So, Maybe, 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 maybe. Hmm. Maybe half and half. Hmm. Maybe, like, we'll start from here. Open that up all the way around. And then just expose. Keep the stitches exposed right there. Hmm. Loving the uppers. <laughs> but I do it. Oh, I just realized something. I haven't poked the holes of the laces yet. Well, maybe I'll put some eyelets there. No, no eyelets. Just poke the holes. That's enough. I'm gonna make some. Um, I'm gonna make some laces for it too. Like, um, oh, I have another one of these shoes. I think I showed you guys. Let me show you. Hold on. Wait. Let's see. I figured I'd get like a rope. Like a rope rope, you know, whatever. And um, make some tassels like this. Aren't they cool? Now this is the same manufacturer, okay? What brand is it? Stefano B. Stefano B.I. Okay. Now... If you, I mean, it's getting there, right? Slowly but surely. Not really exact, but it's getting there. You know what I just realized? Uh-oh. Was that the clip? I think so. Oh, 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 I just realized something. Oh, my God, I'm glad we looked at it. I think this has a mid, does that have a midsole? I think this has a midsole. It has to be. It has to have a midsole because I want, if we we're going to make it thick like that, oh my God, it does have a midsole. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm not putting the sole on just yet. Then I'm going to put a midsole on first. Man, I'm glad we looked at it. I mean, it's not a big deal, right? It just wouldn't have looked very thick, which we kind of want. That we want that that nice beefy look it just goes with the shoe you know okay so i'm gonna put a midsole on and then i'll attach the sole okay let's continue all right i'm glad we caught that because you know now i got the midsole on here two of them to give it that thickness i'm gonna put this back on cool and we're going to put the sole on. Make this wet a little bit.
pretty stiff, so this will kind of soften it up a little bit. You guys know what time it is. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up sometimes. Look, if we can't laugh at our own jokes, then how do we expect other people to laugh at our own at our jokes, right? You guys see that hump in the middle? Yeah, look at that. That's gonna be bad. I like it. I like it like that. What song was that from? I like it like that. I can't remember. Okay, I can't remember the beat. It's like a dance song, I think, like Latin maybe? A Latin singer? Hmm. It's gonna be stuck in my head now. I got a lot of garbage in my head, man. I gotta go to the dump. I mean, not that, dude. Come on. Oh, that didn't sound right. Like to go to the dump to empty the trash from my head. You gotta have a sharp knife to cut this leather. getting there man this is looking good it's looking beefy isn't it yeah <laughs> let's continue A lot of polishes get stuck in the toe medallion. We'll do that again after we get done. That'll be like the last thing to do. Hook the holes back. Because as much as as much as dye and polish and wax we put on the conditioners, you know, those holes get filled in. Cool. So as you guys can see, the uppers are, I mean, I just put some color and condition and polish back on it, you know. It comes back pretty good. I mean, look at that. You guys remember what it looked like, right? I mean, my gosh, man, look at this thing. Wow. So the next step is going to be sanding, rough sanding this. We rough cut it. We're going to rough sand it. And then I still, I'm still kind of stuck in, you know, what to do with the, 
with stitching it. I'm going to sand this a little bit to give it some, give it that fiddle back waist a little bit. Um, the more I think about it, the more I'm, I'm thinking maybe just from here, we'd open that channel up. I mean, not the channel, but cut it and then stitch the whole thing. Basically, the exposed stitch will be from here. The heel's going to come on here. So you'll see the stitches about that much. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but that's what I'm thinking. All right, let's continue. Okay, I want to show you guys the second pair of the contest shoes. Now, the contest is basically you have to submit two pairs of shoes. One pair, just one shoe gets the full soles and heels. Okay. The second pair would be a half sole and a heel, but both shoes need to be done. I don't know why. That's the rules. So this is my second pair. Pair. Now this is the same style shoe. This is a Stefano Bemer. Uh, they call it Stefano B in the insole. That's the name of it. But Stefano Bemer Norwegian style shoe. Norwegian st stitched style shoes. This is, I guess, that what makes it the Norwegian stitch. Now this one I did a half sole and a heel on. Okay, let me let me see if I can do this over again. Now, I didn't show you guys, I didn't film the restoration on this one, or else we would have been here for like two weeks watching the same video. Now, you see that, you see that curve line right there? That's basically the half, half leather sole. Now, a half sole meaning is basically you got to have the old sole to the new sole like that, splicing them together, okay? But the trick is that you're not supposed to see it the splice on the side here and if you really look you can see the thin line well it's hard to tell here but it's there but again the idea is to hide that well so you don't see it and you try to make that as smooth as possible in the transition of the old leather to the new leather and this is my half sole I think it turned out pretty good I only have pictures of this, so you'll see the pictures of the before and after of what it looked like. All right, and I think I'm done with these contest shoes. We're gonna ready to ship them out. They'll be uh, they'll be going to the Netherlands. I won't know for another probably. We're January second now. Uh, I probably won't know till end of maybe end of the month into February. So as soon as I hear back from the results, I'll upload the video, which won't be anytime right now unfortunately but it will be as soon as I find out all right let's continue
welcome back man that was a tough project let me tell you I mean I don't think I would have done that for a like a customer's job you know it's just too much work it's almost like making a whole new shoe you know which was which is pretty difficult if you don't know what the hell you're doing which I don't but I kind of improvise along the way and you know here and there tidbits of information and um, we finally got it done you guys want to see am I happy yeah I'm happy I'm always happy well not really Now there's a lot of detail going on in the shoe. Now you guys remember when I when I told you guys I was going to put like a red, white, and blue on the on the front threads here? I tried it; it didn't look good, and I just kind of I just kind of said, eh, "It's not going to work." There's three sets of stitches there. You guys remember I showed you guys, right? Now, see the word buy, recrafted in USA, buy, B does look, it didn't come out too good. That's okay. I don't think they're judging me on that one letter. Now, this is a partial blind stitch. Okay, so there's your stitches there. You see that, right? And then the rest of it, you don't see it there. I cut a lot of details out because because it would have been here for another hour or so trying to you know videotape everything but trying to get this focused straight. I could have gone for another good hour. Now these are called V cleats. See the red in there? Isn't that cool. The V cleats were pretty much made famous by uh, Florsheim Imperials back in the day. Now they don't make those anymore, but I do have a handful left. Not too many. And um, we still use them now and then, not all the time. Now, this is what it used to look like. What a transformation! I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta admit too, that's a huge, huge transformation. But it doesn't look too bad, actually. I mean, it's not, it's not bad. But the problem is that I don't think I could have done this for like a customer's job because especially this one has a hole in it. There's no way I would have been able to bring that back. It just, it just, it just wouldn't hold, you know? Now, this is basically, this is the footbed that got replaced. This is called the Holdfast. It was just, it was just done. I mean, look at this thing. Trash. And this is the lining that got replaced so imagine like the shoe like that it's done so I think it turned out pretty cool so what y'all think looks good huh so by the time you guys will see this video um, it'll probably let's see today is December 8th um, I won't be able to upload it until I get a notification from the judges on where I placed because you're not really supposed to make it public until you know until the judging is done. So um, so it'll probably be January before I can upload it. Sometime January, I hope in January because the the contest you're supposed to send the shoes in end of this month, and then the actual uh, contest itself, uh, you know, giving out the awards and the ceremonies is not until April. Okay, but you know since I am here in the States. This is in Netherlands. It's going to happen. Um, we, we ask that if we, whatever place we placed, if we have any awards coming, we, we kind of ask them, we need to know ahead of time because we're not just next door, you know, going to drive over to the ceremony. We, we're going to, you know, make plans to go out there. So hopefully they'll let us know as soon as, as soon as, um, as soon as um, they find out, we'll, we'll find out also. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, it was kind of tough this month. Last month, we, we were so backlogged with work and I had to do this job here and there just to, not job, project. Uh, I had to do this project here and there just to kind of get it done, make sure it's finished before the deadline. 
and um, in between all the all the customers work that I had to get done and um, I think um, I think I achieved it um, now we got to get back to reality and and go back to customers work and trying to get those out as fast as we can thank you again for joining me uh, comment subscribe what else share um, what else I think that's it okay we'll see you guys again on the next project take care